morning. Today is the 10th of November and here we are once again at Coventry Station where we shall be buying a ticket and boarding a train for Birmingham to National because this is part one of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2023 Lancaster Insurance NEC Classic Motor Show. I don't know how many parts there'll be, probably about 22. If you don't like that, start thinking about ending the video now. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, still not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Maybe one day. Welcome to the NEC viewers. As with all the slightly shambolic shuffles, I do apologise in advance if I get things wrong, if I fall over, if I'm interrupted by announcements, and generally if it's absolutely terrible, that's just the way that it goes on this channel. Now we've got all that preamble out of the way, this is Hall 2 and this is the Club Alpha UK stand. We're going to start in Hall 2 because uh, the auction is right next to here and it doesn't start till tomorrow so we can get round that auction first of all without being interrupted by announcements and crowds of people. So 1979 Alpha 6, uh, this is um, a car that's sort of related to the Alfeta but it is very unique. Not many were sold over here. This is a left-hand drive one. 79 makes it a really early one. I think we're talking kind of single-digit numbers for the tax on the road of these. I have actually driven a, another sort of 1980s Alpha, this was 79 this one, but they were made in 86. The Alpha 90, the only one in the time that was roadworthy in this country also this colour. I've also driven a couple of these. This is a 166. This is with the 2.5 Busso engine. Club Alpha is a very good club if you want sort of advice about um, Alfa Romeos in this country. Absolute pain to change a cam belt on one of these um, 24 valve transverse Bussos though. But a stunning car. I prefer the facelift ones personally. Um, but uh, it is a lovely car, that's a 2003. Then we've got um, an Alpha 75, again, one of these with the transaxle. This one uh, is a 89 2 litre twin spark. Very much like to have a go in one of these. I can see sort of various common bits in this with the Alpha 90. It's just the sort of door handles and things like that. I wonder if the interior is as weird as the Alpha 90s one is. A bit older this time, 66 Alfa Romeo 2600. And we have a biscuit leather interior, which is very nice actually. This is like a fantastic car. That is beautiful. Wow. So what, how, what, what year did this, this to 68, so that's a 66, it's quite a late one. I love the colour of that. Next we've got an Alpha Sud, this is a very late one. Um, ignore that plate, it's a personal one. 83 was the last year they made um, the Alpha Sud. Apart from the um, Sprint, which is the, the uh, sort of coupe version. This one's a TI Green Cloverleaf, which is quite a desirable model. They were launched uh, all the way back, I think 1972 these came out, but this is the Series 3, I think they call these. So it's a really late one. I would like to have a go in Alpha, in Alpha 6 at some point, actually. Then we've got another Alpha 6. So, you know, we've got some real rarities. I mean, look at this um, sort of steering wheel. We'll poke, yeah, we'll poke the camera through the gap. There we go. This one's an auto. You could get a manual as well. Again, this is quite an early one. About 1981, and that was actually a UK spec car. 
Next we'll go for the Jaguar XJS Club. Now, um, because literally last night I released a video on an XJS, it's very appropriate. This one is an XJSC. It's not the full cabrio, that was a little bit later than this car. The one I drove was the full cabrio. It also had this engine, the uh, 5.3 V12. Very careful not to touch anything. Yeah, the interior is slightly different to the one that I drove, which was a 1991. It's one of the last ones, um, what's called the XJ-S. This one's the Daimler prototype, isn't it? I think I've seen this before, so we've got um, yeah, Daimler double six. Let's have a look at the interior. Daimler badge on the wheel, and there was reflection there. So apologies for you, this is a slumbolic shuffle after all. It's an 86. Um, yeah, it's interesting that the, the, the sideburn treatment to the rear is completely different for some reason. Um, that's very nice. So is this one. 1993 XJS 6 litre V12. I do prefer the later cars, like this one. Don't know why. Um, just like the look of them a bit more. So you can see again we've got a different rear window treatment on this car. And we have a beige leather interior. Mm, I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. As you can see, compared with that early XJS there, the rear window treatment and the, the buttresses are different. It's very nice. The back end's different as well. It's just actually a, like a pre-HE, this one, this one. Adds a manual. Wow. Very rare. Yeah, pre-HE. P Digital. Yeah, four-speed manual. March 81. Very nice. Um, so sort of XJRS prototype type thing, yes, XJSTWR. 1985. Headlamp wiper action. Got the uh, different alloy wheels. It's olive interior in this one, really. And there's a friend inside as well. Hello. Looks like he wants to make a phone call on that mobile phone now. Then we have something very luxurious looking here. It's a, oh, it's a Lister. 82 XJS V12HE by Lister. Getrog 5 speed manual. And a uh, biscuit leather interior with embossed sort of bits saying Lister on them. Interesting. Look at those wheels. Definitely some interesting variants of it here to see. So we'll now go on to the um, Fiat Motor Club GB stand. It's always an interesting one. Here we have this uh, early multiplier. I'm going to have to be a bit careful about this views because a lot of these have engines that we don't discuss on this channel. Thank you, Mayor of London and Council Leader of Birmingham, for your optional emission and clean air zones. So this is a 2000. It's quite an early one for a, for, for a multiplayer. And actually, the condition of this is really good. I, I haven't seen one in this sort of condition for quite a long time. And yes, before you say it, viewers, I know Ian Seabrook had one that had been modified somewhat distastefully. Um, he's actually here, and I've already seen him today. So at some point we will be going over to the stand and um, having a look at the car that he's brought. Look at this. Strada 105 TC with a 83 tax disc. I assume that means this is an 82. Yes, it is. Look at the condition of this, I and mean, we've got this weird sort of interior. It's absolutely immaculate, this car. That is uh, worthy of a thumbnail, I think, viewers, this condition of this. And all sorts of certificates of merit and original brochures and all sorts of things like that. I mean, how many pre-faced Estradas do you see 
and how many of them are 105T seats? Not many. Fiat 600 multiplier, 1964. It's right hand drive, wow. Goodness gracious me. I don't know where Mr. Bushby is, who um, is one of the leading lights of the club. He's not bought any of his cars here today, but many of you will have seen his cars actually on the channel because I filmed a lot of them last year. Maybe he's on a break or something. He's got a couple of pandas here. These are both the uh, Mark IIs, I think they call these. H, so 90 to 91. We've got little Sergio Tacchini bags in this one. It's not the first time that Fiat gave bags away with small cars. The 127 Mr. Bushby has has a, a, a bag that attaches to the driver's door card by Velcro. So this is the other Sergio Tacchini limited edition. Very nice. And we've got a Panda 4x4, because of course we do. And this is in really nice condition as well. And we've got a little friend panda in the back seat, because of course we do. I forgot we got one there as well, with Sergio Tacchini cushions. So uh, F's is 88, 89. There's a little book there. I'm afraid I haven't got time to read the book view, so I have a long way to go. We're only on the first part. Now this is very nice. It's Fiat 124. The design of which was also used in various larders. It's been a long time since I've seen a Fiat badged one of these. Left hand drive um, on a K. Let's see if this actually has a year on it. It's a 72. Wow. It's only a 1.2, which I think was the smallest version of this engine. That is, um, it's really special actually. Then Mr. Miller from Miller Corner has uh, brought his. Fiat Seicento Sporting, the Super Seicento. I can't remember if I've actually seen this car in person before, obviously it's all over his channel. I have driven a Seicento before, but it was um, an SX, it wasn't um, one of these. We've got a huge number of uh, stickers and things. I forget now whether this is a 2003 or a 2004. And next to it we've got another sporting car, a Mark 1 Punto Sporting, 97.98. It's amazing to see these. I mean, the, the, the rot on these Mark 1 Puntos, as many of you know, was atrocious. So to see one that's actually survived as well as this one has, and this is a very typical colour of the period, is uh, wonderful. Another yellow fit here. I think we sort of lined the yellow fits up in a row. Uh, we're now on the Fiat Coupe stand. Um, is this a 20-valve turbo? No, it's the 16-valve turbo. I have driven a 20-valve turbo. Um, this is the 16-valve. This is a sort of earlier one than the one I drove. Like a 95 and 96, this one. Yeah, maybe it's actually a 95. There's the prices for them. And uh, there's the colour chart. Actually, two colour charts there. Uh, what's that say there? Broom yellow. This one is um, like one of those Polo Harlequins. Look at that. Again, another early one, 95, 96 no. plate. <laughs> and this might just be, yeah, the 16 valve, the sort of like a base model. But you know, when you have a car that looks like this, because you really call that a base model. And we've got car it's very similar to the one that I drove also 20 valve turbo also a late one um, with this kind of body kit on it that's a 2000 so it's one of the very last ones um, yeah but the only thing I would say about the 20 valve turbo when I drove I didn't really like the steering very much it wasn't as fearsome as I expected in it but very fast very fast to x one nines this is one of the late ones I thought the late ones like this were badges Bertone um, yeah, here we go, just Bertone, not Fiat. This is um, an Abart model, clearly. It's got Abart everywhere all over it. Less about systems, stickers and badges. This will be the 1.5, I think. So all the later ones were. So 87 to uh, 88. Another one of the Bertone badge ones here. So, again, a later one, I think they 
badging from as a battalion from from 1985, I think it was. The last ones were made in 1989. That one, I'm not sure. Features on Car SOS. I was actually watched that in preparation, but I did not. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it says in that magazine article what year that is. Oh, here we go. Is this a grand finale. So here we go. This is a grand finale. I think we've seen this probable actual car before. The um, grand finale was the one right at the end, which makes some sense. What? That's for attaching the panel. Still got those sort of spindly Fiat um, stalks. Yeah, grand finale is definitely one of those. You can see it on the dash. Um, spindly stalks and things like the 127 in this car. But still actually not that dated a design by the time this car was made, which is either 88 or 89 on an F. There we go. Right, uh, we shall move on to the next section, I think. Mm. I think we've landed in a very agreeable area here, viewers, because not only do we have a nice XJ40 Jaguar, we also have a beige leather interior with wood and some kind of crazy thing on there. Is that a sign organizer or something? And some cassettes. Ooh, and we've got cruise control and the J gate and an old mobile phone and all kinds of agreeable accessories during the Financial Times from 1992 and a Panama hat does life really get any better of course this is uh, a sovereign model all the luxury mm, we've even got beige leather on the door cards very very nice very very nice indeed Ooh, we've got more beige leather they did make an XJR for the XJ40. In fact, here is one. And we've got those um, sort of bottle cap style wheels that were also on that um, XJS over there. Mm. Oh, this one's got piping. Mm. Mm -hmm. A beige leather steering wheel. Mm. Very, very nice it is. With the uh, 3.6 litre engine. Also got a very, very late um, XJ40 here, this 93, 94 only, with the V12 engine. I think the uh, old Series 3 with the V12 was made up until 1992, because they weren't able to uh, engineer the V12 until a bit later. But uh, that's very nice too. We we're happy with that, viewers. Some E-types. Challenger E types. I haven't driven an E type myself, viewers. I did enjoy the experience. This one has got sort of definitely more modern seats in it. I wonder if that's the original Moss 4 speed in there. So this one's on a Q plate. I wonder what. This is the basis of this. So it's a square tube space frame chassis, and this has got a Rover 3.5 litre V8 in it. 180 horsepower, so a bit short on what originally would have been uh, maybe it's like a 4.2. That's about 265, I think. So bits of Ford, bits of um, Rover, and it's got the uh, Vauxhall Corsa C electric power steering, which it's not a bad idea in a car like this because the steering in an um, in an E-Type when you're just at parking speed is very heavy. I know because I've driven one. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's pretty nice. It's a nice affordable way into E-Type ownership, which um, <laughs> they are very expensive. The Daimler, Manchester, and BSA club. 1952 Daimler Special Sports Coupe. Some nice lines on this, and of course, you've got once again a beige leather interior with wooden piping. Obviously, in the right place today, viewers. Very, very, very attractive two tone paintwork. 
1966 Daimler V8 two and a half litre so Jaguar Mark II body shell with Daimler's own 2.5 litre V8 engine this one looks like it's an auto yes it is one piece of wood on the dash these actually can be bought for sometimes quite reasonable money there we go 0 to 60 takes 13.8 seconds Lanchester here LA 14.2 Road Rider Deluxe from 1938 can't say I know too much about these Ooh, a Daimler Dingo Scout car that's a tiny little thing isn't it it's only got a 2.5 litre engine in that Pre-selector epicyclic gearbox with five forward and five reverse gears. 55 miles an hour would be, I don't know, mildly terrifying in that. 1934, Daimler 15 Light 6 Saloon. Can't say I know much about these, to be honest, yes. Pre-war cars are not really my speciality. Right, viewers, I briefly lost my grip on the phone there, but I managed to recover it. Whoever said that this video was not going to be shambolic? Because it has been incredibly shambolic. Living up to the standard. The Daimler SP250 Owners Club. Also known as the Daimler Dart. We made a fiberglass in memory. Again, the same engine as in that um, 2.5 litre V8 saloon. Obviously, when uh, Jaguar bought BSA, and with it Daimler in 1960. They didn't really feel they needed necessarily to continue production of both the E-Type and the SP250. So eventually, in 64, the same year that this car was made, um, they were discontinued. Interesting looking car, very distinctive. This one's with a nice cream interior as well. So we've got um, Lancia Appia here. This is the Lancia Motor Club stand. What year would this be? I can't really see. Sometimes information sheets tell you, sometimes they don't. It doesn't say. Never mind, that's um, it's rather nice. Then we've got an A37. Absolute utter monster. This one is a 1984. Built for, I think it was Group B. Yes, it was. Not the safest um, motorsport ever devised, I don't think, unfortunately. Ooh. Is this, by any chance, a Delta... HF Integrale. Yes, it is. Ooh, hello. It's for sale. As Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says, this could be yours. Please call 07850372180. What if this is an evolution? It looks like it is, because there's a sort of wide body on it. Oh, it is, it's an evolution too. This would be like a 94 or 95 then. Yeah, the last batch. Mm. 215 horsepower. I mean, that's going to be worth quite a lot of money, viewers, I think. Much earlier Lancia here. I wonder what um, year that is. Unfortunately, there's no information sheet on that one. Never mind. We can uh, have a look at some betas. Beta Coupe, Rally Conversion. I wonder if it tells us what engine capacity this has. Oh, it's quite an early one, but let's say 1.6. Ooh, it's, um, it's all in French, 76. Alitalia colours here. And then we've got um, Beta Saloon from Beta Boys. 
think I've actually looked inside one of these properly. If you want to kind of know more about cars like this, I recommend the Grand Thrift Auto video series on these. So it's a wise, quite a late one. Is this served about the same time the Beta Trevi or Trevi was out? So on a Y, it would be sort of 82, 83. Very beige. Very beige indeed. And look at that dashboard. Yeah. Goodness gracious me. You can't really see, unfortunately. It's a bit dark, but um, it's there. Let's go on to the um, HPE next. Again, this was from the same year as the the, uh, the, the, the saloon, 82, 83, from the chequered flag. Must have sold it as a used car back in the day. Sold in London somewhere. This is the 2000 injection model. Well, look at that graphic. Yeah, graphic equaliser up there, I think. It's got a little one. Heater controls, they look like that as well. Oh, that is very, very nice viewers. Very, very nice. Let's have a look at the um, information sheets here. It's an 83. Why is the indicator stock on the right-hand side? Hmm. Much earlier, aren't you here? Got uh, the Aurelia, this is 1954. Is this right-hand drive because it's a UK car, or right-hand drive just because some cars initially were right-hand drive? Yeah, it's actually an Italian specification one. I can't remember the reason why a lot of Italian cars were right-hand drive until that point. Oh, a Fulvia. This is a um, Fulvia saloon. I mean, um, the coupe's a lot better known than the saloons, but this is, this is what the coupes are based on. This is a um, 72. It's got the 1.3 engine. 1.3 engine is producing 87 horsepower back in the day with impressive things, really. It's still quite a handsome car. I mean, they came out in the early 60s. That does look very stylish. So, a Beta Spider. This one is a 1981 car. Resident absolutely. Uh, sort of Bournemouth plate, really, on this one. It's owned by Dan Trainer, been in the family since 1982. Very nice. Oh my gosh, a white leather interior. Goodness gracious me, it must be a pain to keep clean. Look at all these gauges. Oh my gosh, you've got six different readouts apart from the speedometer and rev counter. Goodness me. It's very agreeable views. So we'll end this part with this section here. Um, one half of this area is uh, the Jaguar Breakfast Club. 1977 Jaguar XJC R Resto Mod. So yeah, the uh, 4.2C. Uh, these were made in the mid 70s. These cars, based on a Series Two. This one has a 4 litre supercharged engine from an X300 XJR. I bet that thing is very, very fast. 370 horsepower, a 5 speed Getrock 290 gearbox. Excellent. Those wheels look like they're off the X300 as well. Then we've got. Ooh. Ooh, very nice. X358 Jaguar XJ 4.2 Sovereign and we have a beige leather interior that someone's very kindly going to show me thank you very much I think I will uh, have a look and just uh, take a seat my shoes are clean viewers what an absolute treat. Beige leather interior, wooden piping. Um, I think this is actually touchscreen, this particular model. This is 
about as good as it gets, isn't it, viewers? Look at that. That is um, really, really rather nice. I've driven um, one of the earlier types of, uh, of this, the um, X350, I think, I think they're called. Um, but that is even nicer than the one that I drove last year. That is uh, a really nice car. Thank you. Another nice car here, the, an XKR. Ooh, we've got a little friend in there. Let's go around with a little friend. A drive tribe XKR. Why is it left-hand drive? Oh, okay. It's, a left, it's an American spec one that's been converted to a manual. Um, and we'll have a look at the uh, little friend if we actually get near the car. There we go. He looks ready to pounce there. If anyone who gets things wrong at the NEC. Middlebridge Senator. We are not allowed to make that connection on this channel, viewers. That is banned. We're not allowed to say that. Instead, we can have a look at uh, one of these middle bridges worth sort of continuation cars. Maybe these were the cars. Um, sort of later, this one, there we go. It's owned by a certain person who is just over there. Keep quiet, viewers. So this is uh, a 1988 car. We'll go around the other side. That is um, it's a manual as well. Excellent. And we can obviously have a look at this sort of orange one. That is um, a color, isn't it? This one is a 1989 and it's got a 2.9 Cologne V6 in it, which would have been used in the contemporary Ford Granada or Scorpio. I like this colour, that's nice actually. This one, yeah, there's, there's the automatic gearbox, a later sort of Ford unit. I think that I've just found my favourite one. It's not the one was owned by a certain person we can't discuss because it has a beige left for interior views. Interesting dash on these later ones and steering wheel. I think I've driven a car with these um, indicator and wiper stops but I can't remember which car that was at the moment. Something British but I just don't remember. That's very bad isn't it? I should remember but I don't. Um, this one is, uh, is it, um, let's have a look. It's another 89. Very nice. Right, uh, I think that means we're going to go into the auction in the next part. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and we shall see you again for more incorrect information.